Good day. This is William Garvey, Editor-in-Chief of Business and Commercial Aviation Magazine. Today we're speaking with Steve Charbonneau, a veteran corporate pilot who also serves as chairman of the NBAA's Safety Committee. That group recently introduced its top safety focus areas for business aviators, and these include specific issues and hazards. Steve, among the subjects of the committee's focus was cockpit technology. Are pilots on top of the automation now or lagging behind asking, what's it doing now? I think in some cases that may be true. However, I think that many pilots, certainly business aviation pilots in transport category airplanes, are really well equipped to use their equipment. They study hard. They get good training. I think when you compound high-technology cockpits with airspace congestion and complex procedural requirements uh, in a very sophisticated environment, you create an opportunity for task saturation, for distraction. And then when you understand how difficult it is to monitor systems that are 99.99% accurate, I think that we introduce an environment that can be easily mismanaged. And I think that the old adage of what's it doing now only begins to touch the surface of a much broader underlying issue. On the subject of technology, there's been a lot of controversy, especially in in the lighter aircraft segment, about the uh, adoption of ADS-B. What do you think its impact, that technology's impact, will be on safety overall? I think overall, ADS-B is is going to provide a layer of understanding within the aviation environment. It'll provide us with more meaningful information. At issue will be how well the pilot is able to take that information and process it to properly identify threats and and take action. At some point, everyone's bucket of information gets full. And so I think it will introduce opportunities for us to train and learn how to properly manage the technology, how to prioritize things so that we are less distracted and more equipped to operate in this environment. Having too much information is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just how you prioritize it and how you react to it is is going to be, I think, a new skill set for for pilots. Certainly, pilots learning and and adapting to the complex uh, airspace environments. I see ADS-B as being a very good thing, and I'm I'm excited to actually see it in use. Years ago, a uh, character that blemished business aviation was the rogue pilot. There may be some still out there, but I think that character is largely reduced. However, the safety committee has heightened attention to the uh, procedural non-compliance as a significant hazard. How do you explain that and how widespread is it and what do you think the motivation is? We've seen evidence in incidents and accidents over the years that point to an issue of procedural noncompliance as being uh, contributing to those incidents and accidents. Personally, I think the vast majority of all of the people in business aviation, all of the stakeholders are acting very professionally. I think that procedural noncompliance issues can be systemic. They may emerge from perhaps a a lack of safety leadership, uh, a culture that emerges within operators, uh, operating environments, and that culture is accepting of shortcuts, noncompliance behaviors. There's a compounding effect to that. In the end, I believe that we will only begin to reduce our accident rates when we begin to address the underlying human factor-related issues. And of those issues, procedural noncompliance is a major contributor. And so our safety committee is motivating operators to get beyond the routine observations of of why they may have incidents or accidents and and really take a deep dive into understanding the human factor-related cause factors. Only then, I believe, will they be able to properly identify appropriate safety mitigation.
We've been speaking with Steve Charbonneau, chairman of the NBAA Safety Committee. This is William Garvey, editor-in-chief of Business and Commercial Aviation Magazine. Thanks for listening in.